Hey folks, this shows the finished product of the LED light installation. As you see, it's uh, turned out extremely well. I'm able to dim it as well as increase the brightness. It's beautiful. Stay tuned. Today I'm going to walk you through how I replaced two light bulbs in the high ceiling and install additional uh, LED recess lights to make a total of six LED recess lights in my high ceiling. The background to this is that my current high ceiling had two of those old uh, fish fish eye type canned uh, lights. These are about uh, 20 years old, I think. And uh, one of them actually fused out the bulb. So I had only one of them working and it was extremely dark, the family room. So I'd called in a couple of electricians to basically go up and change the light bulb and also install some additional recess lighting. And I was charged or quoted about $135 per light because it was a uh, high ceiling. So all in all, for six lights, it would have been more than $800 to replace them. So what I thought was maybe this is something that I could uh, think about doing as a DIY project myself. And uh, if I had the right approach, instead of going from down and keeping a 20 foot ladder, what I thought was, is there a possibility that I can go in through the attic? So this idea came to me and I thought I was exploring the feasibility. And after some time that I went and checked out the attic and everything, I felt fairly comfortable that this could be done from up instead of going from down. So that's why uh, you'll see in the video that my whole approach has been to go from the attic to get this done because obviously putting in a ladder and uh, getting up there or even a scaffolding to go 20 foot uh, high uh, and getting this done is going to be fairly difficult and risky and that's probably why a lot of professionals are charging that kind of money uh, so i just went into the back door here to get this replaced i'm very happy with the results so stay tuned and keep watching and i would really appreciate if you can like this video as well as subscribe to my channel there are a lot of other useful videos and i can uh, uh, post more if I get a little bit more encouragement through additional subscriptions and uh, likes of the video, so stay tuned. Feel free to post your questions and I'll do my best to answer in the comment section. Thank you. The first thing I had to do was to find the location of these existing lights. So as you see here, I took the insulation out. And now what I'm seeing is measuring if there's any leftover current or electricity passing through. The next thing I'm doing is to nudge the whole thing out. It's extremely tightly attached to the existing uh, ceiling structure so it's it's a little bit of a pain to get get rid of this whole thing so if you're looking at it like i'm kind of nudging it out uh really taking out all those handles that are stapled into the cross beams and pulling it out so once i succeeded in getting one of them out one of the lights out uh, what i'm then doing is the bulb over there it's held to the can uh, using some kind of uh, small string so i had to take that out as well the second light that you're seeing i'm just bending those elbows out there uh, it's i mean there's really no technique here it's all kind of brute force to take this out so then what i'm doing is i'm just checking to see there's no electricity there and then kind of uh, opening up the wire nuts so that i can take that romex that runs into the uh, uh, can light out before i nudge it open so with that there you see the Romex is out now, continuing to take the can light out. Once it's out, the same thing, I'm kind of uh, uncoupling the bulb, you're seeing those elbows that are connected to the can, and then it's connected with two wires that I'm just cutting through, and then I'm go just going to drop it down. It's a 20 foot drop, so I asked my wife to place something soft at the bottom, like a sofa, so it kind of dropped onto the sofa. So this is a picture that shows how the can lights were placed initially, right? So what I want to do in the ceiling is I want to install six lights. So what it means is I need to drill a hole in between these two lights uh, that you're seeing here. In order to do that, it was very difficult to find an exact center there. So I approximated it and the way I did that was I saw the fan's location. The fan is almost centered between these two lights. So I went up to the attic and found where the fan was actually connected to. And because it's not exactly centered, I just went one bay over and identified that spot to be almost center between the two lights that you're seeing there. And I chose that spot for drilling my uh, middle hole on that row. So the next video you're going to see uh, as a continuation is basically me using the drill bit uh, that is a specialized drill bit for drilling circular holes to make that hole uh, to create the third light in that first row.
So I want to walk you through what the current connection is and what I really want to be doing here for installing the additional lights. So if you take this as my family room, right now what's happening is that there are two lights here. One is here, which is the old can light, and the other one is here. And this is connected through to a dimmer here. And these two, the power comes in here and the power goes here, right? So what I really want to do right now is I want to install six lights. So there are two here. So I want to add another three here. And I want to add another one here in between. So in order to do this light, that the, the light hole here, which is the in-between light, what I need to do is I first need to take this out, meaning I cut it in half, this line that goes from the uh, one, one of the old lights to the other, and basically feed it from here to the second light, and from the second light to the third light, third light to the fourth light, fourth light to the fifth light, and fifth light to the sixth light. So this is the way I want to power it. So if you really look at it, the number of ins and number of outs, if you look at the first one here, the number of ins is one, and out is one, in is one, out is one, same here, in one, out one, in one, out one, in one, out one, in one, out zero. Because there's nothing else that this is feeding. So once I do this, all of these will be connected in series and the power would be going across all of them and all lights are going to come on. The next thing I'm doing is that taking the junction box that came with those lights and plugging in the neutrals, the hots and the ground into the connectors that they're given from the incoming mix. So after I drill the hole, there's no way the light can go from above. It has to come from below. Since I'm not going to use a ladder, what I'm doing is I just threw a rope down to my wife who tied it to the light and I just pulled it up and I'm removing the rope and then opening up those tabs and pulling that through the hole and putting them on. So then I went downstairs to switch on the dimmer to see if everything is working fine with all the connections that are made and all the lights turned on fine. So it looks really nice with all the three lights on. It really brightens up the space. So one thing I did notice as I finished this was the first two lights that had the cans. Uh, if you look at the cutout there, cutout was a little bit messed up because the cans that they had was a little bit oversized. So what hap ended up happening was that the sheet rock is basically not fully flush right meaning there are some uh, marks over there which basically shows more sheetrock has been taken out it's not something i caused it's something that happened because the old can lights were much wider and they could they were uh, extremely big and they were much bigger than the six inch can lights that i've got so i need to find a way to fix this i can't do a sheetrock repair from under on a 20 foot ceiling so i'm going to use something else i found a product online uh Call it goof ring, by the way, because a lot of people have had the same issue. This is my light, and this is a product called the goof ring. So, what uh, there are several different sizes available, so I had to pick out a size that was more suitable for the application that I was dealing with. My light actually is uh, around a six inch diameter at the back, so I needed something to fix the, fit this. The way you use this is that you take the wire from the resist lighting, route it through this ring, take out the clips, and move it around it. You adjust it center. And what you have when you turn it over is a ring like this, where it covers up any blemishes in the sheetrock and gives you a fairly even surface. So this looks pretty good when installed on the ceiling and gets rid of any sheetrock tear or bigger holes they might have drilled. So this shows the picture after the ring was put in. As you're seeing, there's no light bleeding that's occurring. It gives a very neat finish. So the next thing I need to do is to drill three more holes for the three other lights. So as you know, 
we have these three already done and wired. Now, if I have to drill another three, the attic is laid out in such a way that there are just rafters all along, right? So it's going to be fairly difficult for me to measure the distance from here to where exactly another light has to be because there's no continuity there, right? The attic rafters are running all along. So I need to find a more ingenious way to determine how exactly I could, uh, I could do this. So the rafters are basically running like this. So what I did was I first identified where the fan location was. So as I told you in the earlier video, the fan is right here. So since I can't really walk around on all these spaces at the same time, what I did was I just took this fan as a center point and just measured this distance. It was probably around uh, three feet or so, right? And then what I did was I did the same here. I measured another three feet. And because, and I used this as a guide and approximated how much distance this needs to be from here to drill a hole. I did the same across each of these, right? So basically when I got here, I kept it parallel to here and, and marked the hole over here in alignment with this. And the same thing over here, I moved here and marked the hole over here in alignment with this and just a few inches from the attic rafter here. So this way, what I could do, it's not an exact uh, up to the decimal point kind of an equal layout, but it's fairly close in that it gave, gave me a very good approximation in terms of where the light have to be drilled. So once I marked the holes, the next thing to do was to drill through them. So as you're seeing here, I'm using the same drill bit that I used. Uh, it's extremely important to back off a little bit here. Don't press it too hard or you can crack the whole drywall. So go in a little bit, pull it out a little bit and go in again, right? So don't keep continuously going in. So that's what I did back and forth, back and forth until I could really get a circle there. So all the three holes were made like this. So once I finished that, then I just measured the distance between the holes and came downstairs and took the piece of Romex corresponding to that distance and start stripping it away in both the ends so that the connections could be made to the connectors within the junction box. As you're seeing here, I'm just stripping it out, peeling out the insulation. Then I'm going to separate the neutral, the hot, and the ground, and strip them about uh, three uh, about three quarters inch. And I repeated the same thing across all the Romex runs. Now what I need to do is take out the knockout from these junction boxes, and then install the cable clamp. Basically, the cable clamp is used to hold the Romex inside the junction box. I think according to code, you're supposed to use it in order to make sure that the Romex doesn't come out of the junction box. So what I'm doing here is I am using a drywall knife to take out the knockouts. What you're seeing now is the clamp, the cable clamp. I insert it uh, and then I uh, kind of tighten it from inside and lock it in. Now I loosen the cable clamp screws so that I can put the Romex inside it. What I'm now doing is I have snaked the Romex inside the cable clamp and I'm attaching the hot, the neutral and the ground to the respective connectors provided within the junction box. You're seeing it's a very tight fit. It's only a four inch box. So I'm repeating the same procedure across all the junction boxes. Uh, each of these boxes is going to have one line coming in and one going out, except for the last one, as I showed you in the diagram before, which is just going to have the line coming in. So it doesn't need either a cable clamp or the Romex going out of the last junction box. Now it's time to go to the attic and use my pulley system to pull all the three LED lights to the holes that I've drilled and install them. Yeah, so that one, I've actually pulled the tabs out and attached it to the attic. So it's a very tight seal there. I'm going to go ahead and do it with the other two ones. 
So here are a couple of pictures of my attic. As you're seeing, it's full of insulation and rafters running right to left. So you've got to be extremely careful in kind of working in the space. I wore a protective mask as well as gloves and a full sleeve t-shirt to ensure that the insulation does not get absorbed by my lungs and the fiberglass does not scratch my hands. Uh, you've got to be extremely careful walking here and make sure that your feet is not on the sheetrock, otherwise you can fall through. These are the final results of all the work that was done. I'm extremely happy with this. It's come out incredibly beautiful and I do see that all the lights are fairly well aligned with each other. The two on which I put the goof rings also don't stand out. So overall, I'm extremely happy with this project. Folks, thanks for watching. So hopefully this video has been useful in uh, showing how I went ahead and installed six LED recess lights in a high ceiling. The total cost of the project was uh, definitely much lesser than what it would have taken if I had hired uh, someone else outside to do it. So if you really like this video, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel and also like this and feel free to post any comments and I'll do my best to answer. Thank you.